At least a few times a year, I suffer a massive hit in loss of motivation. A few times per year, a few times a day more like. So today we're going to look at how to study effectively and maybe more importantly, some techniques we can use to stay motivated. Just keep in mind that everyone is a little different and whilst I'll share what I've researched and what worked for me, you might need to make some adjustments or follow a different approach entirely. But I hope at least this gives you a good starting point. There are also some books and resources I'll share later on and you can take a look at how I structure and plan my weeks with this thing. As always, if you enjoy the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and let's dive on in. Before we look at how to structure our study and get the most out of our sessions, we should try and figure out what's driving us. And if we're going to talk about motivation, there's something that I need that motivates us all. Now we have our coffee and our liquid motivation, let's also talk about what motivates us. Is it career advancement and promotion? Is it personal growth and satisfaction? Maybe meeting requirements of an industry standard or validating your skill set. You could also be future-proofing your career and ensuring that you don't fall behind. When I first thought about this, I thought it doesn't really matter why, as long as there's a reason. But then after some thoughts and some further reading, I realized that all of my motivation comes from growth and satisfaction of completing a challenge. It's funny because I really couldn't care less about industry standards and career development. I do things I find interesting, which is how I ended up here in the first place because cybersecurity looks like a fun job. And this is probably why I didn't complete my A-levels and took a different path before going to university. Now that's not to say that your career development and promotion and other things aren't valid motivators, it's just not motivates me personally. So we're all different and that's awesome. So figure out where your motivation comes from and you need to try and make sure that you keep swimming in the right direction, at least for a decent amount of time anyway. Switching lanes all the time and chasing too many things at once will become overwhelming and you have the ability to think critically and say to yourself, this is what I set out to do and this is my motivation for doing it. And often you'll be surprised that more often than not, just thinking objectively about what you want will put you back on track. Some other things that helped me when I found my motivation suffering are setting smaller but more achievable goals, ones that can get done in about half of the allotted time, but usually I use that momentum to keep going. I also give myself a break and put a time limit on that break. For example, at lunch I'll take a 20 minute walk or I'll read a book or play a game or just change my environment a little bit. What's important for me is coming out of my office and just spending 10, 20 minutes either sitting in the garden or making a cup of tea and reading a book here in this room, which is like a living room, I suppose. <laughs> Once again, different things work for different people, so it's worth taking the time to experiment. All right, that's my break over anyway, so back to the office. The funny thing about studying is that when it comes to studying for technical roles like penetration testing, it's vastly different to studying when you're a student. We're in the business of problem solving, and quite frankly speaking, when it comes to real world skills, more often than not, schools did little to nothing to prepare us. So how can we become more effective at building these technical skills? Well, first, we should prioritize doing things ourselves. Even if you get stuck and need to use a walkthrough or a tutorial, just take what you need to get moving forward and then continue working through the next problem. One thing that has really helped me improve my pen testing skills is setting up labs myself. This includes deploying and configuring AD and hundreds of web services over the years. And also within reason, not just copying and pasting commands. In the PEH update, I listed a bunch of commands to set up a MySQL DB for testing. Try and write them out, it'll take two minutes and it's going to help you begin to understand what things do, how they work, and maybe most importantly, you'll begin to recognize and understand error messages when you're troubleshooting your payloads. Next, we want to build on things that we know. And there are some different perspectives on this. One is that you should just try and push your boundaries a little bit by little bit so that you don't become overwhelmed or completely lost. And the second is kind of like mastery learning where you take everything one step at a time and you don't move forward until you've mastered the previous topic. 
Finally, something that really helped me was blocking time for my study sessions. Previously, when I was working 9 to 5, I would study from 7 a.m. till 9, but these days my schedule is a little bit more flexible, so I tend to have a block of study in the afternoon after I've gotten my main tasks done for the day. Find a consistent time slot that works for you and start with an hour, and if you can do that consistently for a month or so, then maybe push out to two hours, but don't expect to be able to go from nothing to vast amounts of study overnight. After a day or two, you'll burn out, and then it's two months and you're back to square one, or even worse, way behind where you started. So this is what I did last week. I write down the key tasks I need to get done, and then I fill the rest of my time up with things as they come up, or I put my spare time into the long-term projects that I have going on. In this case, we're working on a new course, and we're also looking to release a certification. I used to keep an Excel sheet for this, but honestly, I used it for a while and then forgot about it. And at least while this is on my desk, it's in view and it's been good so far for the last few months or so. Another tool I use is a Pomodoro timer. And for general tasks, I work in blocks of 25 minutes, though often I'm doing something that requires deep focus, like building a lab, or if I'm doing some code review and testing an open source project. In this case, I make a tea or a coffee, set a two hour timer, kick the cats out of my office if they're not already asleep, and then turn my phone over as it's always already on silent anyway, and crack on. I actually really enjoy these sessions and definitely my best work always gets done. And finally, I limit myself to two items of study these days. Before, I was like, I need to improve my programming, I want to do more Portswig and Mystery Labs, I need to be doing Hack the Box machines each week, and then I want to go for OSWE, and CRTO looks interesting, and I need to pass my PMPT, and whilst this sounds like a recipe for productivity and getting everything done, it's actually a recipe for the exact opposite, getting literally nothing done, and also has the potential to lead to burnout, which is our next topic. Okay, so my opinion on avoiding burnout basically boils down to understanding how much time and energy you have and prioritizing things accordingly. You can't do everything, so if everything is a priority, you're probably going to burn out. It's as simple as that, really. And I know that there are other factors at play here, depending on different factors of stress from work or life, but if you have more stress, that means you can do less. And so either you have to reduce that stress or you have to reduce the number of things you're trying to do, and that means less priorities. That was very wordy and probably not at all practical, but a good way to do it is to set yourself something achievable, set an attainable and easy schedule, something that looks really easy on paper, not something that is using every minute of every day, and once you've managed to do that for a month, add to it. You'll be much happier and more successful in the long run. Consistency over quantity. 100%. Another important thing is to keep work and study and life in balance if you can. If you have things outside the world of cybersecurity, then make sure to take care of them, including your health. And honestly, if you're like me, working from home, try and leave the house at least once per day. One of the things I struggled with previously was disconnecting. I'm usually available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, including weekends. But now I'm spending a little bit more time of my weekends going off bouldering or going surfing, and I'm completely away from my PC. Even if there is a disaster, there's nothing I can do about it. And that kind of disconnect is really good for you, I think. We're somehow obsessed with replying to messages and emails instantly, and unless you're a medical professional on call, you do not need a 15 second SLA. So that's it for this video. I hope you found it insightful and can put some of the techniques we've talked about into practice. If there's something that you do that you want to share with others that helps you study more effectively, then let us know in the comments down below. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time.